Today we're going to be covering the uh, first ever Brawl Stars mod tier list. It's, it's going to be a fun one. Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kyra Simon. It's time to brawl today. It is finally time for the first ever mod tier list. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure you subscribe for future updates to the mod tier list as well as the other tier list. Now if you didn't know why I'm so tired, just last week my wife and I had our baby. So I've been taking a little bit of time to bond with baby Kairos and help out with Lady Kairos. But I'm back guys and we're ready to hit with some awesome Brawl Stars videos. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off by talking about this tier list. Now, first of all, I wanted to give a huge thank you to my tier list contributors that helped out with putting this thing together. Okay, we got 16 top players with a very deep understanding of the current meta, okay? Their average highest trophy count is over 13,000 trophies, and their current average trophy count is over 11,500 trophies trophies. Okay, now a quick explanation of the tiers here, okay? Now it would take way too long to create a mod tier list for every individual game mode, okay? We got six game modes including Duo, Sh Duo Showdown and four mods. Multiply that together and that would be 24 different tier lists for the mods and that is that is just too much time. Even if I had the time to make those 24 tier lists, there's nobody out there that really wants to watch all of them. <laughs> so I had to figure out the best way to try and incorporate the game modes and maps without having to actually overcomplicate things. Now this mod tier list is actually going to exclude the mode and map consideration and will take a look primarily at how these various mods make certain brawlers more competitive or bad for the mod. Once again, we're talking about Meteor Shower, Energy Drink, Life Leech, and Robo Boss. Now I already already have a competitive tier list that includes rankings for each of the competitive game modes and it already takes map dependency into consideration. Now after I'm done reviewing this mod tier list, I'm going to show you how you can combine the mod and mode tier lists together to give you the most competitive brawlers regardless of which mode and which mod is active at the time. So uh, make sure you stick around to the end of the video to, to uh, check that out. Okay guys, let's go ahead and start off by talking about Meteor Shower. Now the first thing you need to realize with Meteor Shower is that brawl Brawlers that thrive without walls do really, really well, and brawlers that thrive with walls do not do very well. Some other really important things to consider when it came to creating this tier list is that meteors actually force brawlers to move in predictable ways. So brawlers that can actually take advantage of that do pretty well. Now let's actually go ahead and take a look at the brawlers, okay? So we've got Brock, Piper, and Spike in the S tier. We have Rico, Pam, Penny, and Terra in the A tier. And then in the B tier, we have Crow, Nita, Colt, Poco and Bo. Now Brock and Piper are long range brawlers and they really benefit from having fewer walls. So they're kind of an obvious option for the S tier. Spike has an insane amount of control with his super, which allows him to take advantage of predictable movement from uh, a meteor or something like that. Next in the A tier, we have Ricochet who excels in combat with lots of walls for him to bounce shots off of, but even without walls, he has a really long range and does well enough to justify that A tier position. Pim also in the A tier is tanky enough to survive big hits from Piper and Brock, and she also does a really good job at dealing damage from a distance. Now, Penny is also really great at a distance. Now, typically, the best place for her turret is behind a wall in the middle of the map where enemy brawlers can't really get to it. But typically, there are still going to be walls available next to the side of the map, so if she puts them back there, her turret still has an insane amount of range and is definitely going to be able to hit enemy brawlers who are trying to avoid those meteors. Terra also in the A tier uses those predictable moving patterns to land really devastating supers. And on top of that, if the position is perfect, she can actually use her super to pull enemy brawlers into a meteor for an additional 2000 damage. In the B tier, we have Crow who does a good job of pushing enemies back over a period of time. And he also has a long enough range to justify actually using him. Now he is really squishy, so you do have to be careful with him, but his speed does allow him to easily dodge those meteors. My recommendation for these B tier brawlers is to typically not play them unless they had a pretty good ranking in the uh, game mode tier list. Need is also a good option if you're looking for a medium range mini tank. Her bear does help push brawlers back into poor positions, which can really kind of be beneficial sometimes when those meteors are coming down. Colt is also a good brawler to use if you know how to use him. He has a long enough range that allows for some really solid damage and he is fast enough to avoid those meteors uh, or 
or enemy players depending on what you really need to avoid. Poco is also a good option, he offers a lot of area control and his heals can be very helpful if you or your teammates find yourself in a uh, difficult situation between a, a meteor and another brawler or something like that. Now Bo is a little tricky to use but he does have an effectively long range that deals a decent amount of damage at a distance, especially because of his decent HP being able to withstand a couple of shots from Piper or Brock. Okay now up next we have Energy Drink and the tier list collaborators worked very hard on the Energy Drink tier list to make sure it is as accurate as possible. Now it's kind of tricky because brawlers only gain an advantage in Energy Drink. No brawlers actually have a direct disadvantage in energy drink which means that there are really no poor options. What really matters is just which brawlers are even better due to there being energy drink in comparison to those brawlers that are only slightly better. Now for energy drink there were three major considerations that we looked at in determining placements. The first is map control. The more part of the map that you have control over, the more likely the energy drink will spawn on your side. Now the second thing that we looked at was devastation with the drink. Now some brawlers are simply more devastating when they have that energy drink than other brawlers. Having a really high DP PS, or even having really high survivability makes brawlers more devastating. Third, we took a look at brawlers that have the ability to really kind of like protect or cover energy drink spawn sites. Still, to re-emphasize things, the primary emphasis was map control. We took a look at devastation with the drink second and ability to cover energy drink spawn sites last. Now let's go and take a look at the actual tier list. Okay, so in the S tier we have Spike, Nita, Poco, Pam, and Brock. Then in the A tier, we have Piper, Terra, Crow, Barley, Mortis, Daryl, and El Primo. And finally, in the B tier, we have Bull, Frank, Shelly, Jesse, Penny, Bo, Dynamite, Colt, and Ricochet. Now, Spike and Nita are obvious S tier ballers for energy drink, okay? They control very large parts of the map. They can deal insane amounts of damage if very quickly if they do actually get the energy drink. And they also do help cover energy drink spawn sites with their supers. Poco and Pam are also excellent choices. They both cover very large parts of the map, which allows them to gain important map control. And additionally, they're able to use their supers to either help stay alive themselves so that they can get the energy drink or they can assist a teammate in getting that energy drink as well. Brock is also an excellent brawler, okay? Now his attack isn't the best at actually just controlling the map, but his super is excellent at it. On top of that, he can one-shot most brawlers from a very long distance if he does actually get the energy drink. Piper is in the A tier. She's kind of like a lesser version of Brock due to her inability to control the map very well. Then we also have Terra, who's kind of a lesser version of Spike with a devastating super, but with less damage output at a distance than Spike. Now Crow can definitely be devastating with that energy drink and he does also offer a decent amount of map control but he does have very low HP very low survivability and that means that even if you do go up to the energy drink or you actually have gotten the energy drink you have to be very careful about managing your HP so you don't actually get taken out barley is excellent at covering energy drink spawn sites because of his ability to attack uh, while hiding from behind walls and his super can also be devastating with that energy drink but Similar to Crow, his low HP typically requires you to be very careful when actually going in for the energy drink. Now Mortis is in the A tier because of his ability to quickly swipe that energy drink. It's super easy for him to go in, get it, and then get out. He can also be incredibly devastating with the drink, but he does offer very poor map control and does do a bad job at covering spawn sites. So if you are going to be playing Mortis, make sure you have teammates that do kind of have that uh, a little bit of balance to try and make up for his weaknesses. Daryl and Primo are are in a similar situation as Mortis. They are incredibly devastating with that energy drink, but they do offer poor map control, so make sure you do have that balanced team if you're going to be playing with them. Now, their ability to consistently deal more damage when not directly next to an enemy brawler allows them to protect spawn sites slightly better than Bull, which is what sets them apart from Bull in the B tier. Now, the B tier brawlers don't really require much of a mention. They don't really deserve the F tier position because in energy drink, that only makes them stronger, but there are better options in the S tier or the A tier. The B tier brawlers can definitely be recommended to be played if they are S tier or maybe A tier in the current game mode that's going on at the moment. Okay guys, let's go ahead and talk about Life Leech, but before I talk about Life Leech and Robo Boss, let me just mention one quick thing. Supercell has not said anything as to why we haven't seen these two game modes very often, nor why we've only seen them in Showdown. Now the last that I heard, Life Leech and Robo Boss were intended to be active in all game modes. Now my best guess is that something went wrong that they couldn't exactly plan 
before, which caused some issues that they'll most likely be able to fix for a future update or something like that. With that being said, I do think that it is best to create a tier list based on all game modes rather than showdown only even though we've only seen it in Showdown. Once again, if you do want a tier list specifically for Life Lead Showdown or Robo Boss Showdown, or even duos, then you'll need to watch until the end of the video to see exactly how you can do that. Now that we've explained that, let's go ahead and talk about what makes specific brawlers better or worse in Life Leech. Now the first thing is that health is the most important resource in Life Leech. Now this means that brawlers that can heal have a distinct advantage over all of the other brawlers. The second important aspect to look at for Life Leech is a brawler's ability to consistently deal damage and therefore heal themselves up. The third thing that's really important to consider is a brawler's ability to avoid taking damage. Now in regular combat, you are at a disadvantage when an enemy hits you, but in Life Leech, you are at a double disadvantage because when they hit you, not only do you have less HP, but they actually regain, which makes avoiding taking damage incredibly important. The last thing that we considered, yet still very important, is how much base HP the brawler has. Brawlers with a higher base HP will be impacted less by getting hit by enemy brawlers than brawlers with less HP. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the Life Leech tier list, okay? In the S tier, we have Barley, Poco, Pam, and Nita. Next, in the A tier, we have Piper, Brock, Ricochet, Dynamite, and Crow. And then finally in the B tier, we've got Mortis, Daryl, Bull, Bo, Jesse, Penny, Colt, and Nita. And there was a lot of discussion about which brawler would be best in the Life Leech tier list. I would put my money on Barley, okay? When Barley is max, his star power allows him to heal HP with every single attack that he puts down. Now, despite having really low base HP, Barley is the only brawler in the game that can heal himself without having to charge up his super first or without having to actually hit a shot on an enemy brawler. You take that and the fact that he can actually hide behind walls which allows him to avoid taking enemy damage really just makes him an incredibly overpowered brawler for a life leech. Poco and Pam are also very solid S tier brawlers. Not only can they heal themselves, their ability to help heal teammates uh, makes some incredibly credible assets in this mode. Now Spike's also in the S tier. He doesn't have a ton of HP, but he can consistently deal damage to enemy brawlers while also using his walls as protection. Now that wouldn't be enough to put him into the S tier by himself, even though he's incredibly strong, but with his super and the fact that he can throw it down and actually heal himself up if he really needs to by using that super does definitely help Put him into that S tier position. Now Piper, Brock, and Ricochet all fall into the category of being able to consistently deal damage as well as keep themselves from taking damage by using their long range to their advantage. They don't have a ton of HP but consistently dealing damage does help keep them alive. Also in the A tier we have Dynamite who is kind of like a lesser version of Barley. He's great at dealing damage from behind the safety of walls but uh, he can't heal himself. Lastly in the A tier we have Crow who can deal damage from a relatively long distance away and that poison does allow him to stay healing up over a period of time. Next up we have the B tier including Mortis. Now when Mortis is maxed out there are three ways for him to heal in Life Leech. Okay, his regular attack, which deals damage so he heals. His super, which actually allows him to heal just because his super heals him, and then also heals on top of that because of him actually dealing damage. And then also his star power. Now in Life Leech, there are a lot of deaths, which means that there are gonna be plenty of skulls all over the ground with lots of opportunities for Mortis to heal himself. But with Mortis, he has to get up super close to the enemy brawler in order to deal damage, where they can just quickly auto aim and deal damage to him and with enemy brawlers directly firing off against him because they will be healing from every damage dealt that they do to Mortis. As such, Mortis is definitely a high skill brawler that could be a really great option in the hands of the right player or a poor option in the hands of the wrong player. Ultimately, there are other brawlers that do better more consistently, so we decided to put him into the B tier. Daryl and Bull also landed in the B tier. They do insane burst damage, so they would be able to wreck anyone that they are able to get close to, but their large reserves of HP will typically be used as a resource for the enemy team to actually heal up from a distance. Similar to Mortis, really great players will rock them in Life Leech, but most of the time there are just better options. The other B tier brawlers aren't particularly good in Life Leech, but could be solid options depending on the current map or game mode. Up next we have Robo Boss. Now this is probably the hardest to create a tier list for because since the update it's only been out for literally 
one day. That being said, I was able to test some things out on the developer build so we could try to make this list as accurate as possible. And of course, I will be updating this tier list in the future as we gain a better understanding of what works and what does not work in Roboboss. So make sure you subscribe for that. Now, as far as the tiers are concerned, the first thing that you need to recognize is that attacking the Roboboss doesn't actually charge up your super. As such, supers that actually shred through the uh, Roboboss, like Barley's super, actually don't really help you a ton in this game mode except for as a last ditch save if the boss really does put you in a tough situation or if you can actually get the boss and an enemy brawler as well the next thing you need to recognize is that robo boss is kind of like the opposite of energy drink okay in energy drink the team with the biggest advantage and the most map control early on is most likely going to be able to get the drink and is more likely to snowball their success into a dominating victory in robo boss if the enemy team is kind of pushed your team back there is more room for that robo boss to actually spawn on their side of the map which can actually put a lot of pressure on them and give you an opportunity for your team to have a comeback now in robo boss the last thing you want is for the enemy team to be able to have that comeback and so what is really important is for you to get rid of the robo boss as quickly as you possibly can and that requires a high damage per second with your regular attack for those situations when you really gotta shred through them okay guys let's go ahead and actually take a look at the robo boss tier list in the s tier we have pam Colt and Spike. Next in the A tier, we have Ricochet, El Primo, Daryl, Bull, and Shelly. And finally in the B tier, we have Barley, Bo, Jesse, Penny, and Terra. Now, aside from Bull and Daryl, who typically don't shine a ton in non robo combat, Pam has the highest DPS in the game when she is close up and lands all of those shots on an enemy. Additionally, she's actually pretty decent at regular combat, which justifies her S tier position. Colt also has a really high DPS, which allows him to take care of the robo boss from a distance, and that is particularly useful if the robo boss is chasing a teammate. His speed and versatility on top of his high DPS definitely justifies that S tier position as as well spike guys oh my gosh yes he is in the s tier for every single mod including robo boss and by the way he's also s tier in five of the six competitive game modes as well he doesn't necessarily have the highest dps so he will tend to struggle against the boss more than some of the other s tier brawlers but he's just so good overall consistently in regular combat that he does deserve this s tier position next in the a tier we have ricochet who's kind of like a lesser version of colt when it comes to dps next up we have all of the tanks, excluding Frank, El Primo, Daryl, and Bull. Now with their regular attacks, Daryl has the highest DPS in the game, Bull has the second highest DPS in the game, and El Primo has the fourth highest DPS in the game. Now these brawlers should be able to easily take out the Robo Boss. Shelly's also in the S tier. She does have a decently high DPS, but she's actually mostly in the A tier as a, a tank counter, which I expect we'll be seeing quite a few tanks being consistently played in Robo Boss once it is active in more 3v3 game modes. Up next, we have Barley, who is a great non combat ability brawler and while I don't really recommend wasting his super to quickly get rid of a boss's HP it can be used like that if this situation desperately calls for it now if you move in the right way when you attack bow actually does offer pretty decent DPS you do have to be careful where you place those mines though as they can be tripped by the boss now Jesse and Penny don't actually have a really great DPS in the game but the fact that they can actually use the robo boss to bounce their shots or pierce through the shots and burst or whatever uh, does actually give them somewhat of an, in an interesting advantage that other brawlers don't really have. Lastly, guys, we have Terra, who does have a very low DPS, especially from a distance, but if the situation does call for it, you can actually use her super to pull both an enemy brawler and the boss into the same situation to really put the enemy team in a rough spot. Okay, wow. This is already turning into a long video, and we're not done yet, guys. Now let's actually go ahead and talk about how you can combine the mod tier list and the mode tier list so that you know the best brawlers to play no matter which event mode and mod is currently active at the time. Here's how this basically works out, okay? So you take the tiers from the specific brawler from both the mod tier list and the mode tier list, and then you put them right next to each other, okay? The highest tier goes first. Now, if you do not see a brawler for a specific mode or mod, that means that they are in the unranked or the F tier, meaning that they're not competitive for that mode or mod. An F tier on either list places the brawler as not recommended for competitive play. Now, if a brawler is an S tier in one and an F tier in the other, 
maybe they might be okay, but you're probably going to be able to find other brawlers that are going to be better options anyway. Now, here are the combined rankings in order, okay? At the very bottom, we have not recommended for competitive play. Then we have BB tiers, which is fair for that game mode and mod. Next, we have AB, which is good. Then AA, which is great. SB, which is excellent. SA, which is fantastic. And finally, we have SS, which is amazing. If you have an SS brawler, you should definitely pick that brawler. I wanted to give a huge thank you to the collaborators that really helped me out with this video, okay? We've got Corey, Cradu, Illustria, LOL, Lukey Bear, Olive Oil, Off the Bean, Portal, Real Canadian, Shadow Jutsu, Skunk, Seaman, Spen, LC, Superbram, The Secret, United, and Ed TM. These guys really discussed the heck out of this tier list to make sure it was as accurate as possible for you guys. Okay, well, um, wait, you still watching? That means you get a very special treat! That's right, guys. You get to screenshot this bad boy, the mod tier list and the mode tier list side by side so that you can easily combine any combination of modes and mods to figure out the best brawlers no matter what's going on. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much, especially for all your support while I was gone for the past week. Seriously, guys. Your, your comments have been just truly amazing. Thank you so much. Additionally, I wanted to give a big thank you to my YouTube and Patreon sponsors. If you're interested on how you can become one of those for exclusive perks, make sure you check out the link in the description below. For now, this is Kairos Time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.